This is an exponential curve, and it represents the relationship between time and growth. And for three years now, I've been vlogging the process of turning $500 into $1 million. And presently, we're around the $70,000 mark, which might not seem like a lot until you consider the exponential curve. Because only recently did I start taking this business to the next level. And I'll be the first to tell you that these three years have been quite the grind to get where we are. And, and you know, back then I started with nothing but a scooter delivering food on Uber Eats. Things are really starting to pick up now. So today what I'm going to do is talk about how we went from that $500 mark to approaching $100,000 net worth. And then we'll talk about how we're gonna go from the $100,000 net worth to the $1 million net worth. And it's not just about how much we're going to earn exactly, but also how we're going to earn it. And this is called the cash flow quadrant. Now, if you don't know what the cash flow quadrant is, it's simply a concept popularized by Robert Kiyosaki. And basically it outlines the way that you can earn money and build wealth. The first quadrant is traditional employment by being an employee. The second quadrant is being self-employed and working for yourself. The third quadrant is being a business owner and owning a system that produces money. And the fourth and final quadrant is being an investor where your capital is working for you. Now, ultimately you're meant to level up through these quadrants going from E to S to B to I. So starting with the scooter is only where the story began, not where it ends. All right, so this here is really where it all began. I wonder if it still starts. Oh no, this battery is dead. Dead. Now back when I started the channel, this is what we got started with. I bought the scooter for $500 and we rode this thing delivering food until we had probably a couple thousand. And because the channel always started with side hustles, we really didn't sit in that employee category too long. And, and frankly, this arguably would even be considered self-employed because when you deliver Uber Eats, you're not actually an employee, you're a your independent contractor. But the reason I wanted to show you this and the point of this whole thing is to show this is just to get started. This was the seed to the whole thing. I didn't want to stay in that position too long. Once I had enough money to buy a truck and start getting to flipping, which we'll talk about here in a minute, that's really where things started to go in the right direction. And after the scooter is really when I began to spend a lot of time flipping and when we solidly put ourselves in the self-employed category. We spent a lot of time going to auctions, flipping furniture, we tried Turo, we spent a lot of time doing junk removal. We even started an adult sports league. And some of these things worked out really well, others worked out just okay, and some, some are still a work in progress. We made a ton of money flipping, we made pretty good money with junk removal. Turo was kind of a bust, but we flipped the car, so made some money there. And the sport league breaks even because the expense is basically zero to keep it open. And I, oh, and I also got my real estate license and sold a house. But even though all these things are entirely different, there is one common theme with them that you didn't really get with the scooter. Earnings with the scooter as an employee were capped based on how much time I would spend. With these other activities, yes, it takes my physical presence and it takes my physical work to make money, but the value can fluctuate based on what I'm doing and what value I am making in return. So as an employee, it didn't matter how good I was at delivering food or how fast it would happen, your earnings were capped. But as I became more skilled at flipping furniture, I could identify higher profit items. I could identify better ways to acquire them, faster ways to acquire them, and then in turn, make way more money per hour. And this carried on until we had about $50,000 in net worth, but that is when the biggest change to the channel happened. Now you see, the problem with trying a lot of different things is that a lot of them aren't gonna work out. You might feel like you've wasted a lot of time. And that might be true, but the important part is that when you try a lot of different things, eventually, you find something that works. And when you find something that works, you gotta dive all in. And that's why just a few months ago, I discovered a way that I can order semi trucks of furniture to flip rather than going to auctions or trying to buy them off of Facebook. And this has allowed me to do much more volume with a lot less work. And as a result of discovering sort of this new system, the net worth on the channel is routinely going up by thousands and thousands of dollars every week and month. And while I still consider this self-employed, we are right there on the cusp of turning this into an actual business hiring an employee or two, and really seeing how far we can scale this. So that does explain how we got here, but that doesn't explain where we go. And I would say I have a pretty active imagination. I'm having new ideas and thoughts every day. Uh, it's sometimes hard to even keep them in check. But I have definitely been considering a few options and some of them are surely going to happen and others are just provisional thoughts. So first of all, the next logical step is to go from self-employed to business owner and the way to do that with this business 
is to hire some people so that my physical presence is required to make it work. Now I'll probably still do a lot of things myself like drive the forklift, unload the trucks, maybe even do some of the deliveries, but there's no reason that I can't hire somebody out to help me with the unload, to help me with the breakdowns, to help me with the cleanings, to get the pictures posted, maybe even meet people and make the sales. So I most certainly think that's on the horizon in the next couple months here, if not sooner. And I do want to interrupt and say one thing real quick. I know looking around the warehouse right now, this isn't looking very impressive, but there's a reason for that. And I see for the entire month of January, I have made it my goal to sell as much as I can in this warehouse because we were packed with inventory and it was very important for us to convert that value and the cost of goods into actual cash. So this month I've been extremely dedicated to selling everything in here, the high margin items, the low margin items, and we have made a ton of sales that will be the next vlog by the way but as a result things are looking pretty empty in here which means more shipments on the way so now even looking beyond the furniture business assuming that we hire some employees and we have some freed up capital to either start another business or to begin investing there's a lot of opportunities out there one thing i've considered doing with a lot of the capital is investing that and creating some sort of some sort of product that i can then sell online we already have a warehouse to store all the inventory i would then have employees that could help me with shipping or whatever is necessary and that would then allow us on the channel to sell a product to a much wider audience to help get to that million dollar goal. So from a business point of view, growing the furniture business and scaling that out is a definitely going to happen kind of thing. The secondary business of creating something that could be sold online, that, that's a strong maybe. And then there is one other idea that I'm strongly considering more so out of passion and potential than anything else. And that's that I've considered starting a second channel that's not actually finance based, that would be funded from Mission Side Hustle so that the ad revenue and sponsorships or whatever could go towards the million dollar journey. I get asked all the time on here, hey, do you include ad revenue? Do you include anything like that in the million dollar journey? And the answer is always no, because when I started this channel in the past, we spent all $500 on the scooter. We didn't spend any money for the camera or any of the infrastructure that that would take. And also simply put, yes, I'm an entrepreneur and I have these entrepreneurial tendencies, but I have a lot of passions outside of finance and money that I think would be really fun to explore on camera. So again, it's a moonshot. My time is pretty limited, but if we get some employees here, if we systematize some things, anything's possible. So what about I? What about that investor category? What are we gonna <laughs> What are we gonna do there? Well, I have some thoughts. You see, I recently had a chance to have a call with Ben Mala. I mean, you know, right now it's just a time to try to get your hands as much money as you can and make as much money as you can. Mm -hmm. You just gotta keep hustling, you know? Yeah. Do what you're doing and try to grow with that and make more money. When the market turns around, you'll have, you have some money where you can make some moves. And if you don't know who Ben Mala is, he's probably the most entertaining real estate person in the space. I think the guy's great. He's clearly very successful and bright in that industry. So I really value and consider his advice strongly. And you know, one of the biggest takeaways I had from that conversation is that now is a great time to be building up your cash because we're in some uncertain times. And mainly because interest rates continue to rise, which means we may or may not see prices fall at some point in the future. But no matter what happens, we're going to use the businesses to generate cash flow so that we can then use that for investment into real estate. And that's gonna happen this year. And I feel very confident saying that when that starts to happen, you'll notice that exponential curve is really gonna start picking up. Now, if you've watched my channel before, you know I have a little experience in real estate. I have a duplex that I currently rent out and then my family and I are house hacking a triplex. And plus, I've gotta admit, I'm not much of a stock picker. So by now, I hope the picture is pretty clear as to how we're gonna navigate further to that million dollar goal. We went from driving a scooter on Uber Eats to flipping and scaling this out, but now it is time to turn this into an actual business and then use that money to fund our investment into real estate this year. And maybe after seeing all this, it's given you some ideas for your life, or maybe it's given you some ideas for me to try on this channel. Either way, I'd love to hear it. I've been gone for a while. I've missed talking to you guys. Leave me a comment, even if it's just to say, hey, would you? And with all that said, thank you so much for watching. We'll see y'all next time.